Share Shootout brought to you by Lion of Africa Insurance, ensuring South Africa's future. It's all brand new, it's revamped, it's re-energized, it's remodeled. The Share Shootout League is going to take you by storm. In fact, the only thing that hasn't changed is me, Bruce Whitfield. You're watching CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. This is the most vicious, brutal, unforgiving, backbiting, sly, downright dirtiest, meanest stock-picking show on television. And if we can think of any more adjectives, we'll throw them in during the show. We're all new and unlike before, Share Shootout is now a league. And for the next 40 weeks, you're going to see a fixed number of faces that will go head-to-head -head for the title of Share Shootout champion. They're also competing for 15,000 Rand. They all came today because they thought that was for them, but no, they will get to donate that to charity at the end of the series. We've got nine stock pickers. They're going to be vying for your Twitter votes because the producers have taken away the heavy responsibility of picking a winner from me, mostly because I can't be relied upon to making the right choice. And now it's up to you via the social network. So let's introduce the competitors in no particular order. Now, he may have fallen off the slopes, but he did land on on his enormous feet. You may know him by his name, but for this show, he is Running Dog. My name is Gary Boyson, uh, Head of Trading with Money Private Clients. Uh, at the moment, I'm, I'm experimenting with uh, enhanced alpha trading. You almost uh, go and find value in good quality companies um, and then you know, pick them up, hold them for, for the long term. As long as it's got solid fundamentals, you, you put hedges in place to, to try and get that little bit of enhanced, uh, enhanced performance. So it's, it's, a, it's a philosophy, a new philosophy, but we're trying it out. So how, it's going to be interesting. I think, I think lots of prep work I and mean, it's a very tough show because you never know what the other contestants are going to do. But I'm going to have to really go and dig out some good opportunities for the viewers. Um, and yeah, try and, I think also throw in, throw in a few curveballs, try and find something, uh, you know, some of the more obscure stocks that, that are showing value. So far, my biggest com competition has probably been Mike, Mike Harworth uh, and Sasha. They've always been tough, tough to beat. I think I have a shot at it. Uh, I think yeah, maybe the track record has been fair so far, but uh, it's definitely going to be tough. I just hope the audience is, uh, is going to base their decisions on, on the, the quality and, and the, the performance of the, the shares, not just on the explanations. He's got a big talk on him, hasn't he? But that's him in his natural environment, in his office. Gary Boyson, now you can see how tall he really is. My goodness, you are tall. I've never been this close to you. Um, why running dog? I have no idea. I think uh, one of the producers picked it for me. I, I hope it's not I'm running scared. <laughs> uh, no, well, hopefully not. You've got a very impressive track record on this show. Do you think you've got what it takes to go through 40 weeks of pain, agony, and are there enough shares on the JC to carry you through <laughs> over a 12-month period? Yeah, I hope so. Uh, I, was, I was listening to some of the, the chatter in the, in the green room before this, and there's definitely some fierce competition here. We're seeing so, some, some real quality stock pickers. So I'm a little bit nervous, but uh, we'll see how it goes. As you should be, Gary Boyson is running dog. Our second stock picker is a Scotsman who, believe it or not, turns his nose up at whiskey. For the next 40 weeks, he will simply be known as the Scot. Yeah, yeah. so I've got to look like it's um, very important stuff to drink. Yeah. Mm, absolutely. Chris Gilmore, investment analyst with Absol Wealth and Investments. Investment philosophy is very simple. Buy quality, get paid for holding it, and rarely, if ever, sell. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm getting some cheeky emails here. I think we'll keep that a secret for the time being. I don't want to show my hand just yet. Biggest con competitor is the famous Sasha Narushkin. I think so, and I think uh, maybe it's a bit different from, from previous times. I think the, the mind is going to be more concentrated now. Step aside, Sean Connery, because that was a fine acting job. It really was, Chris Gilmore. Welcome back to Share Shootout. This is the Share Shootout League. You're worried about Sasha Narushkin. Why? Well, it's not just the fact that he's got a wealth of knowledge, but he's very devious and underhand, and he tries to put you off in so many ways. I'll, yeah. give, you, I'll, I'll give you the second part of the argument as to why you're nervous about him. Um, you know, he was educated in Grahamstown. There's really nothing to be frightened of. Well, you know, we all have our crosses to bear, I guess. We yes. do. And yours is the fact that you don't drink whiskey. Let's just yes. remind everybody yes. that you don't drink the stuff. Don't like the stuff. Yeah, I much prefer beer. There we go. Well, at least you've got good taste. Whether or not it's going to be good enough to take him through 40 weeks of this game is yet to be seen. This guy was forced out of retirement with the allure of winning the first share shootout league. Let's check out the Maverick. Sid Vianello. I'm an independent investment analyst and investment advisor. I like looking at themes. I devise themes to suit the particular investment climate 
and I tried investing in companies which fit into whatever theme I believe is appropriate for the, um, for the business cycle at any one particular time. At this point, I don't have a game plan. Um, this is the first time I'm in the competition and I would say I would probably end up devising a game plan as we move along and as I get a feel of how things are developing. At this stage, I would simply say Sasha, simply because he's the longest serving member on the, on the team and he is a very experienced and very successful investment advisor in his own right. I wouldn't have entered if I didn't think I had a good or a reasonable chance of winning it. At the end of the day, it is a game and we all get to have fun, but deep down, we all want to win it as well. Absolutely, that's what he wants to do. He wants to win it. But that's the second time Sasha Nurishkin has been mentioned as the most likely contender. That's going to upset Gary Boyson because he thinks he is the running dog in this particular game. Sasha Nurishkin is going to be freaked out by all of the attention. Sid Bianello, oh, you, you've come out of retirement because you want to show what 300 years of market experience can bring to the game. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Uh, but remember, I did say, this. it's all, also a game of fun. And um, um, I think we... I think we all enjoy a bit of fun from time to time. Absolutely. Are you going to expand beyond the retail sector? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, my own personal portfolio um, has never only held retail shares. In fact, in fact, it probably has le less, ma maybe only five or six percent in retail exposure. So, um, are you cunning? I'm interested in the entire market. Are you cunning, conniving, backstabbing, and downright mean? Well, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have thought so, but, um, you know, remember what I said. You've got to devise a game plan as this thing progresses. I may have to become cunning and devising. This is like Survivor Share Shootout. It shouldn't be the Share Shootout League. We've got to take these guys, put them on an eye. No, that's been done already. Thank goodness we don't have to. I'm not sure which is the lesser of two evils, being a lawyer or being a trader. Either way, the person who calls themselves the good guy has made a call, and it's not the law. It's easy when you do it live because then you just keep flowing. Eh? My name's Levin Gopal. Uh, I'm uh, the CIO with Trademark Futures. Because we're a futures trading house, a lot of it is trading uh, single stock futures uh, and the index. We try and be as swift as possible to get in and out of the market. So we look for gaps both up and down uh, to take advantage of these most of our clients. The game plan, uh, it's a poker game, so you've got to keep a poker face and uh, we, uh, we're going to be armed with all this uh, knowledge uh, and research and uh, we're going to be playing uh, our strategy very close to our chest. Um, so I think it's mainly uh, a knowledge base more than anything. The biggest competitor has got to be Bruce Whitfield. He's always putting us on the spot and he steals all our limelight. I definitely think we've got a very good chance of winning the game. It's uh, like playing poker. So we've got a very good knowledge uh, of the market. We know all the stats uh, and we know when to hold them and when to fold. The Vengo Paul is spoiling for a fight. So I'm his biggest threat. He has no idea. He has no idea. I thought you gave up the law to go into investments. Why are you still dressed like uh, a, a Wall Street lawyer? The good thing about dressing like this is uh, you come across uh, as the good guy. Uh, I'm hoping to win some votes if I dress well, so it doesn't matter what we say as long as we look good. Oh, is that the philosophy? Okay, so the structure is to look good, you don't have to, it doesn't really matter what you pick. It is very impressive. It, I, I, I saw this the other day in the second-hand shop. I decided not to buy it. Um, and the Vengo, Paul, we wish you luck. I love the combination. Um, your competitors have got a lot to learn from you in terms of how to dress. Let's see whether or not you will impress when it comes to stock picking. He's given up the lavish comforts of the first world for the rough and rugged edges of the the city of gold. I give you a guy who calls himself Cheetah. Uh, it's Matthew Warren and I'm um, head of financials and retailers here at First Avenue and a partner as well. So what we do is we do intrinsic value investing and so we seek out high quality companies at a discount to fair value um, and that's really it's th that combination that we're always looking for the best combination possible to put that into the portfolio. Uh, I think if anything just to keep it simple so get to the main points, get to them quickly so that people can understand where I'm coming from and, and think on my feet from there. Oh, I don't know, I'm new to this, so I guess I must just bring my A game and see what happens. 
I'll give it my best shot, certainly. Um, you know, stock pitch is always a good way to get your thoughts out quickly and efficiently. Uh, we have to do that in the shop here, so why not do it uh, for the benefit of the viewers? Now, I brace myself for a lesson in linguistics because it's not Chi-Town, it's Chi-Town. Why is it Chi-Town? We don't call it Chicago, we call it Chicago. Mm. Explain. Uh, it's just an abbreviation that came along somewhere along the way, but it's a, it's, it's a popular moniker amongst those that have lived there. Okay, everybody's going to want to hear you, so put yes. it nice and close to your mouth. There we go, Matthew. Now tell me, you don't know who the biggest competitor is. Should I tell you who the biggest competitor is? Please do. Everyone else says it's Sasha Nerishkin but I don't think it is. Just remember that, that's all you've got to remember. Between you and me, no one else is listening, just bring your A game and you'll be absolutely fine. Matthew Warren is going to be one of our competitors today. And what we've got is like the national lottery draw, but here we don't have any winners, only nine losers who are going to be brutalized for the next 40 weeks here on the Share Shootout League. But we are going to have a lovely assistant who is going to bring a whole bunch of eggs with a whole bunch of names in them and we'll crack the eggs to see who plays who in this episode, in the next 40 weeks of episodes of Share Shootout. Some say the show is quiet time from his little bundle of joy. All we know that this man is called Value Guy. Nick Norman Smith, Chief Investment Officer of Lentis Asset Management. We follow a value investing approach here at Lentis. We generally are quite contrarian, so looking for areas of the market that people are really um, hate and, and are, are nervous of, and that's where we believe we can find the opportunities. I think it's about, about finding some, some stocks that the audience really like, exciting, and try and spice things up a bit and not just have the boring old favourites. I think Bruce Whitfield is definitely going to be uh, the biggest troublemaker on the show. Yeah, absolutely. One must be positive. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a tough competition, so for sure. Okay, note to self, I must really go and buy competitors of this show, how to win friends and influence people, because so far some of them aren't starting so well. He's only bitter because Sasha narishkin has been named as the real biggest competitor, not you, Nick Norman-Smith. Uh, don't you think that people rate you? Don't you think people think that you're fantastic at stock picking, nice and close to your mouth so we can hear you? Well, you know, time will tell, Bruce, so uh, it's, it's always good to be the underdog, I think. Now, how do you feel about the fact that the viewers of this show are going to be asked to, to choose the winners and it's out of my hands? Um, over the moon, I couldn't be more ecstatic, <laughs> given the unconscionable decisions that have sometimes gone against me, thanks to you, so I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I will do my very best, however, to undermine you over the next 40 weeks, and I wish you luck in the first show that you will participate in. Our next guest will take the red pill, or will he take the blue pill? Most importantly, as his hashtag says, this is the one. Now, Hansip, Portfolio Manager at NetBank Private World. We are a valuations driven house that aims to create wealth for our clients on a need based basis, especially those who take a three to five years view on the market. I will try to, you know, uh, show my knowledge of the markets, keep to speak, you know, with companies and also with my competitors, and also try to make sure that I stack up to the competition. Christopher Gilmore from Hapsa World. I think so, you know, because I've been in the game for some time, you know, and, you know, my knowledge of the markets and companies is very sound, so I think that I stand a very good chance. What's that smell? It's the smell of fresh meat on the butcher's block. No, you haven't played this game before. Do you realize what you've done to yourself for the next 40 weeks? Your life is no longer your own. L I, look, I think that I've put myself into the deep end, you know, but uh, hopefully I will be able to navigate the way through. You and know? why do you call yourself the one? Do you think you will be the last one standing? Well, I think I'm the special one. The special one. You're yeah. chosen. You're chosen. You're very special. Yeah. Let me touch you. Yes, you are special. Now we'll be participating for the first time. He doesn't know the rules. He doesn't know how vicious and backbiting it is. So we wish him luck on that particular front, especially if he's drawn against Sasha. It's like saying Mufasa in the Lion King movie. <laughs> Sasha. It's very scary. Word on the street is our next guest single-handedly broke up the Soviet Union. Then he left and came to Africa. We call him Sasha. He calls himself Bugs. Stand by for action. My name is Alexander Narishkin, but Sasha is short for Alexander. Call me Sasha, please. Everything from answering the phones. Oldfield? Yes, I've heard of that company. To attending to client email. <laughs> to, you know, make payments, everything. We like to answer our own phones because when someone phones, strangely, they want to speak to us. Ignore lots of the noise in the short term. Buy the quality and stick with it for as long as possible. Get inside Bruce's head, just to try and confuse him as much as possible. Yeah, and act like Carl Icahn. Outrageous, like, this board is pathetic. 
I've never seen such a useless board when, of course, it's someone else's pick. Yeah, that's how I think I'm going to work. Yeah, but you mustn't tell my competitors. Warren Buffett. No, I'm kidding. Has to be Bruce Whitfield. He's uh, way too clever for everybody on this show. So if I can beat him, I'll be happy. I just need to beat Bruce. Uh, then I think I'll win this league. Yeah. A weaker character would be deflated by this, but I cannot be deflated. I cannot be undermined, and I will not be undermined. Not even by Sasha. He's so scary. You're not nearly as scary as you look. I mean, you aren't nearly. You don't look nearly as scary as you really are. Maybe it's probably more appropriate. Yeah, I don't know where all these guys are coming from. You know, especially Sid. I'm flattered, Sid. <laughs> 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 now, now, Sasha, you've called you, you, you've called yourself Bucks. Yeah, because be dull. Mr. Krabs was taken, you know, of <laughs> yeah. course, from Spongebob, yeah. So, w do you really think that you've got a chance of winning this against this, in this erudite company? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's trying to, he's trying to unsettle them, he's trying to make them think, who is this Sasha that everybody is so scared of? Rumour has it that our last stock picker not only fixed foreign exchange rates, but gold prices too. Now he's on a mission by Her Majesty the Queen to fix the platinum price. I give you k Live. My name is Clive Ramatibela Smith, and I am the Chief Investment Officer of Inkunzi Investments. Uh, my investment philosophy is keeping to the fundamentals of investing, so keeping it simple and straightforward. Stick to the basics and make sure that uh, you create a phenomenal traction from that. My game plan for the league is to make fun of everybody else and make sure that they get embarrassed at the end of the show so that I can win simply because I get public uh, preference. My biggest competition in the show, and it has nothing to do with investment philosophy at all, it would be Gary, uh, simply because he's tall and big, and I'm terrified of him. I don't stand a chance, I'm going to win the league, because I feel that I've got the right criteria uh, and the right material to make sure that I win the league. I am uh, I qualify better on the BEE scorecard, so I hope that will help. <laughs> Clive Robert Bella Smith is our final contestant, and over the next nine, th 40 weeks, nine contestants will be participating. Clive, I mean, Gary is huge, and you are not the largest of our contestants. I am terrified of this man. Yeah, as you should be. Yeah. Is it because of his enormous intellect or because of his enormous physique? It's definitely the physique. Absolutely. <laughs> so, over the, over the next 40 weeks, who do you want to take out most? Who do you want to hurt most? Who do you want to see whimper and cry in your presence, other than me, of course? At a safe distance, Gary. Okay, absolutely <laughs> right. Clive <laughs> Ramatibella Smith, we wish you luck and we wish all of our contestants luck because these are your players. These are men, because we couldn't find any women who were brave enough to put their necks on the line for what will be a gruelling, cunning, dirty, downright nasty battle against each other. Now, these are the house rules that you need to follow in order to vote for these guys over the next 40 weeks. We need your participation because I'm not allowed to have a say anymore because they say I'm rubbish at it. So let's see if you're any better at it. Get anybody and everybody you know to vote for you on Twitter. Guys, that doesn't mean you can start up ghost accounts um, and start voting for yourself. Well, actually, you can do that. This is, uh, it is downright dirty, mean and nasty, isn't it? And of course, you have to win at all costs. That's what these guys have to do. I'm sure Gary's already started setting up his ghost accounts so that he can get in the votes. So, gentlemen, get as many of the Twitterites to follow at SSO League as possible, and may the best stock picker win. And may we see lots of blood, guts, snort and trana. Uh, that, five is not for publication. Um, <laughs> let us take a break, and when we come back, we'll have a lady. We've got to have one at least, and we'll have some people in suits acting as auditors, plus some Easter eggs. You don't want to miss it. See you after this. <laughs> I've got a quiz question for you. Is there one league in the world that can make super rugby look like a game for girls? Well, that league is Share Shootout, and that is going to be the league that is playing over the next 40 weeks. Welcome back to the most vicious stock picking show on television. You're watching CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. Before the break, we introduced you to nine players that we have on our log. Now it's time to look at the, the log standards as they stand. Well, we've got Sasha Narishkin, we've got Gary, and we've got Matthew, and we've got Nick and Levan. Of course, those are the first five contestants. You don't see any scores yet, but there'll be the games that they've played, the games they've won, the games they've lost, and those that they have drawn, they will get points. Uh, and, and so will Clive, and so will Sid, so will Neo, and so will Chris, who goes by the name 
the Scot. So there's zero scores for all of the contestants, but after the rounds of matches, the boys will be separated from the men and the scores will be separated. But the big question is, who gets to go first? Well, to help us answer that question, Nastasia Arantza is with us. She is our lovely assistant this morning. She has got, what is that? It looks well, like a bunch of Easter eggs. in the spirit of Easter, it is actually befitting to bring eggs on. Lovely. And they actually come with goodies. And not only that, they'll have the names of our Share Shootout League players. So we'll get to pick them out one at a time. Okay, so pick it up and just rattle it around a bit. Okay. Let's hope I don't break any. No, yeah, yeah don't break the jar or cut yourself because <laughs> that would be a bad start. I don't think that's helped at all. So that's no. fine. Um, fate, uh, fate has decided who will be drawn. Um, why don't you go ahead and draw the first of the eggs out and hopefully they break easily. I hope so as well, hey? Okay, and also, while you're drawing out the first egg, I must introduce you to our silent adjudicators. The silent adjudicators are people who oversee Nastasia to make sure that she does the job properly, to make sure that she has no sleight of hand, that she doesn't pull any fancy tricks, and she doesn't put Gary up against Clive, because as we know, Clive is scared. Boy, am I hoping for Clive and Gary to go up in the first show against each other. Nastasia, put us out of our misery, crack that first egg, and tell us who will be the first competitor. Is he made in China? Excellent. It comes apart Ooh. perfectly, just like that. Oh, it comes with a goodie, but we'll get to that a little later. Oh, a goodie, but we're more interested in the name, <laughs> um, which has been wound very, very tightly. It looks like somebody spent a lot of time at university. They've been busy. Absolutely. Little, our little Easter egg fairies have been very busy. Do we have a name on First that piece First name paper? drawn out. Apparently, I'm supposed to say this like I'm scared. Oh. Sasha. Sid, the maverick. Chris, the Scott. Levan, the guy with the Wall Street suits. The guy whose height everybody fears. Gary, the... It's runner. Gary Boyson. Nick, the value guy. Matthew Shaitan. I'm hoping I'm okay. pronouncing it correctly. Fresh meat, no. Clive Ramatabella Smith, who gets a free pass on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Yeah. Um, MI6. You are <laughs> MI3, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> MI3 and a half foot. Um, <laughs> so, now, Clive Roman to Bella Smith, are you glad you got the buy or did you really want to meet Gary in round one? I was looking forward to meeting Gary. I was really prepared and I, I had been working hours and hours for the first time I went to gym yesterday just to prepare for Gary, but it didn't happen. Okay, well, now you've got an extra couple of weeks because yep. you've got a buy in this round and you'll be absolutely fine. So go and buff up um, and it's nice to see you. Wow, there's a lot of chest in one man. So, <laughs> Share Shoot Out League officially starts next week when our first contestants will go head to head. The first contestants will be Sasha and Sid, who comes to his first game. He doesn't know that Sasha is a street fighter. Don't miss the first mean, quick, fast, higher grade stock arguments that you've ever seen on television. Thank you, Nastasia. A lovely job well done on at least eight of the eggs. You've left a terrible mess. Your mother will not be happy with you. Don't forget to go to our Twitter page because this is where it's really important. At SSO League for the profile of the stock pickers and to keep updated with the league, we need you to vote on your favourites. Vote as many times as you like. Start up some ghost accounts if you like because we know that our players will be starting up a Mrs. Smith account who will constantly vote for them all the way through the next 40 weeks of the series. We'll be back next week at half past eight Central African time on CNBC Africa with our first contestants on the all new, all singing, all dancing, all backstabbing share shootout league. Until then, bye bye. <laughs>